Today we're going to construct something called a bi-quad antenna. Now this is a directional antenna that should yield anywhere from 5 to 8 decibels of gain. If you notice behind me, I've got a satellite dish. You can mount the bi-quad antenna on the end of the dish arm here, which we'll do that in another segment, and we can get significant more gain. But on to the primary topic, the bi-quad antenna. The bi-quad antenna it constructs of a rear ref uh, metal plate of some sort that is going to use, be used as a reflector. And then we have this double diamond driven element, which I call the bow tie element, which is going to actually actively receive antenna signals, uh, radio signals. The back plate to this will be one wavelength. So in this case, it's close to five inches, 4.9 inches or something like that. It really doesn't matter if you go over over the actual, as long as you're not below one wavelength. Each, one, each side of this is going to be quarter wavelength. So each one of these is quarter, so we have wavelength on each side. The distance between the reflector and the driven element will be one-eighth wavelength. So in this case, it's about 13 millimeters here. Each one of these is about 31 and a half millimeters. Now, creating this, there are a couple of, of ways of doing it, and there are instructions on the internet. One common way, which I'll put a link to of a video on the show notes, is using a copper PCB board, you drill a hole through the center. If you notice, I've got some nice silver marks here, so I can actually get nice 90 degree angles, so I know exactly where my dead center is. And I used a through hole panel mount to uh, affix the, um, the, uh, the panel mount end connector. Now, you take a PCB and you drill through it, and you get a copper pipe, and you feed that, you, you solder the copper pipe through the hole. The copper pipe acts as the actual separator and then you solder everything together. But the problem is, one, PCBs are expensive. Two, you take a blowtorch to a PCB, you run the risk of, of uh, heat expansion, breaking the copper away from the actual board. It's happened to me a couple of times. It's a very expensive mistake, not something you want to go through repeatedly. Um, getting the actual copper tubing, all you need is about two inches or less, but they only come in like lengths of at least eight feet. So copper is actually an expensive material on the market nowadays. I don't feel like spending $30 for a 10 foot length of copper when I only need 2 or 3 inches. Um, the third thing is the actual crimpers. They're expensive. Not everyone wants to go out and spend $80 on crimpers. So although the antenna is solid as all hell, minus one point, the driven element, the double, the double diamond bi quad element, this is really flimsy. All of my antenna designs, this antenna has easily broken off every single time. How can we create a way of creating a bi quad antenna that is easy to obtain the components for, easy to obtain the materials for, and doesn't break the bank when we make it. So today, I'm going to show you how to make a bi-quad antenna out of an old CD spindle, some uh, aluminum tape, uh, a little bit of 20, 20 or 22 gauge copper wire, and a four-hole panel mount connector, uh, end connector. And of course, you know, we got a couple of nuts, bolts, and, and other various things, common tools, soldering iron, and all that stuff. So we're going to get to the table side, and I'm going to get to the beginning of creating this kick-ass antenna. Okay, here's our table of crap. Uh, soldering iron, typical tools, screwdriver, sharpie marker, desoldering braid, solder, panel mount end connector, four-hole variety. Um, you can use the two-hole substitution. I would recommend the four-hole. The uh, through-hole will not work. Uh, aluminum tape, relatively inexpensive. You can get it at most hardware stores. This is used for uh, heating and air conditioning in central, like central air conditioner ducts. We'll need some kind of utility knife, razor blade, or exacto knife. Screws. Uh, you can use screws, nuts, or bolts. It really doesn't matter. This is to actually affix the connector to our CD spindle. Um, a 25 pack would be the best, or a 10 pack, but they are kind of hard to find. You can use something else, but then you're going to have this really huge, uh, you know, muffin cake pan top as they're called, or a cake, uh, cake pan top sticking out of the top. Okay, righto. So, I cut off the spindle, and I use the um, utility knife, just box cutter, to kind of just scrape it away so it's nice and fresh. And then I take the panel mount, and I stick it in like so, and I line it up, and I drilled a couple of holes through it. Now what I'm going to do is... The, uh, the connector can actually fit through like so, and it just so happens that standard PC screws will thread into the actual connector quite nicely. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I take some of this tape, 
and I'm going to line the tape over the top of it and I'm going to get a nice even coat of aluminum tape. Keeping in mind this is actual metal, um, if you want to actually go the extra mile you can actually take sheet metal like I've explained before. Sheet metal is easily procured from um, old cookie tins from the holidays. Uh, just um, a lot of times it's covered in paint or lacquer so just uh, do something to get the, rid of the paint, wire wheel brush or some sandpaper or whatever, get it nice fresh uncovered metal. Um, so I'm going to go ahead off camera because this is going to be kind of boring and I'm going to go ahead and cover this in aluminum tape. Here we go, not too difficult. Went ahead and lined the entire thing with uh, foil tape. I used the ridge over here as a guide, I just took my utility knife, scored around the side to peel off all the extra. You don't have to worry too much about getting wrinkles and such um, on in the foil. Just try not to have like you know excessive amounts of bubbles and boils and such. And then I'm going to go ahead and just fit this on. I'm going to feed the screws through the front of this through the holes that I've pre-drilled. I've got three of the fours. Uh, three of the four screws, or I should well, I guess they're screws. If you need to use nuts and bolts, that is just fine. Um, if you get any tears, I mean, we've got a lot of light in here, so it's reflective. If you get any tears, um, it shouldn't be too big deal if you get tears in the aluminum foil, but if you really got a bad tear, you can go ahead and put some tape over it just to cover it up. Now, I've got this component. It's called a ring connector. These are usually found in automotive applications. A lot of, it, it's actually very common in household to find. And this is going to be the way we're going to attach the, um, the driven element to the shield. Because the problem is, with aluminum, you can't solder it onto it. And you can't solder it onto uh, tape either. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my needle nose pliers, like so. And I'm just going to bend this back at 90 degrees. Just like that. And this is going to sit right here as close as possible but without touching. So readjust it if need be and I'm going to go ahead and screw this on. Lo and behold, let's see if I can get a nice close-up shot of this. There it is. Affixed quite nicely, not touching the signal and well grounded. So that's the reflector part. If you have any kind of sheet metal that you're going to be uh, soldering onto, I'd highly recommend solder on either a ring, or either bolt on a ring connector, screw on a ring connector, or solder your wire to this first. Because if you're using a CD spindle and you're using any kind of uh, blowtorch or soldering gun or soldering iron for an excessively long amount of time, remember this is plastic; it's going to melt. So we're going to go ahead to the clamp side. Actually, no. Before we go to the clamp side, we need to make the bow tie, a uh, 20 gauge copper wire. I actually got a meat skewer here, and I marked two points on it. This point here, right here, that is, I do believe, 16 millimeters or 15 millimeters, one eighth wavelength of center frequency. This is half wave, uh, a half of half wavelength of center frequency. And what I'm going to use this for is a mark. What I need to do is I need to make the bow tie element by creating successive 90 degree angle bends, and Instead of taking a ruler time and time and time and time again, I'm just going to use this as a little mark and bend. Okay, there's our 90 degree. We're going to go in with the pliers and make a nice 90 degree angle bend. Just like that. And then we're going to measure it in again. 90 degree. Right about there. 90 degree. Just like so. There's another one. And we're going to make another one. Now where are we? Make another 90 degree here. Would be a good idea to take some kind of 90 degree angle straight edge of sorts and make sure you have, in fact, 90 degree angle. So I'm going to go ahead and off camera, I'm going to finish this. This next one would be 90 degrees bent this way. You know, I'll go, just go ahead and do it. If you're off like a half a millimeter or a millimeter or so, it's no big deal. It's practically impossible for us to get that precise. There is another bend. 
Then we're going to get another bend. Okay. Go ahead and made all of the bends. I've corrected them and such. And I've left an excessive amount of wire sticking off the ass end. This is actually what's going to be one of the two leads. We also have to solder a lead to this side as well. One on this side, one on this side. And I'll go to the clamp side now and we're going to go ahead and solder all of this together and get it spaced off of the reflector. Typical 30 watt soldering iron, typical solder, nothing special. Have a small surplus piece of copper. I'm going to solder this coming straight out of the top here. And you'll see why in one moment. Fill the solder cup up with solder. Do not use your bare hands when dealing with any of this wire. It will heat up very quickly and it will burn like a son of a bitch. Be forewarned. As usual when soldering, be very careful that this center conductor over here this white material around the around the center of this thing, that's actually um, polypropylene and or high or high um, high impact polystyrene. Either way, it does not react well to heat, so do not heat it up excessively. Now, I've got that meat skewer that I've marked right here. This mark is the uh, one eighth wavelength. And this wire, this center wire, the entire bow tie needs to be that far away from the center. Or, sorry, away from the reflector. So, using this as a guide, I'm going to mark that, and I'm going to cut it. Now, on the bow tie itself, this actual rounded edge right here, not the edge that has the two pieces taken apart, this rounded edge needs to be soldered to just that. Now I'm also going to take my um, my meat skewer or whatever else, I mean this is just a convenience thing, you don't have to do it this way. I'm going to mark slightly longer than the actual wavelength because you can't cut something to be longer, you can only cut it to be shorter. So this is going to have to fit into that center conductor, or sorry, into the, into the shield, and this is going to fit to the center conductor. So what I have to do is keep trimming this away until it Fits. This is pretty much just luck of the draw now. There we go, that should be okay. Another cool thing about using this um, this ring connector over here is if you cut the leg too short, you have a lot of uh, forgiveness and play because of this actual, uh, the actual um, solder cup that they have here. Now technically this is a crimp-on connector, but if you don't tell, I won't tell. I'm going to go ahead and try to fill this up with some solder. And we're going to go ahead and feed this in. Ah, cool down too quick. You might need to use a soldering gun on this because it is a relatively thick piece of wire. The, um, the actual ring connector itself. There we go. Now we're going to pre-tin the signal wire. And we're going to pre-tin the bend in the actual element. And then we're going to bring these two together. Tack them on. And we're going to take this.